Okay, in your circle problem that you had to turn in, the first question asks you to find dy dx for the equation x squared plus y squared equals 25, and you were given a circle. So the first thing to remember is that when you're asked to find dy dx, that means that y is the dependent variable and x is the independent variable, because anytime you have a formulation that looks like this, in your Leibniz notation, this is always going to be the dependent variable, and then the variable down here will be the independent. Okay, so we know then that every time we take the derivative of a y, since it's a function of x, we'll get a dy dx term. So we'll differentiate this, and that's going to give us 2x plus 2y, but since I'm differentiating a y, I'll get a dy dx term, and the derivative of 25 is 0. Algebraically solving for dy dx, I'll get 2y dy dx is equal to minus 2x, or finally dy dx is equal to minus x over y. Now that I know what dy dx is equal to minus x over y, I've been asked to find the equation of the tangent line at the points 3, 4, and 3, minus 4. I'm going to do one of them for you, and then you can do the other, of course, by yourself. So in order to find the equation of any line, we're going to need the slope, and we're going to need a point. We've been given a point, which is 3, 4, and we just need to remember the slope is a derivative. Or in our case, that's going to be our dy dx. Okay, so dy dx is equal to, let me make that like that, is equal to minus x over y. That means I'm going to substitute in 3 for x and 4 for y. So our slope is going to be minus 3, 4. I'm sorry, minus 3 fourths, and our point is 3, 4. Now we just need to remember from basic algebra that y is equal to mx plus b. If I know the slope and I know a point, I can substitute and solve for b. So I know when y is equal to 4, I found that my slope is minus 3 fourths, and x would then be equal to 3 plus b, or 4 is equal to minus 9 fourths plus b, or b is equal to 4 plus 9 fourths, and 4 is equal to 16 fourths, so that's 16 fourths plus 9 fourths, or 25 fourths. So now that I know b, I know that the equation on the line I'm looking for is y is equal to minus 3 fourths x, plus 25 fourths. If you look at this work here, you'll see how you can generate the tangent line for the second point, 3 minus 4. And that tangent line is going to be over here, which is y is equal to 3 fourths x minus 25 fourths. Number three asks us to find the equation of the normal line at each of the two points, 3, 4, and 3, minus 4. And all we need to know is that the normal line is perpendicular to the tangent line. And so this means that if I know the slope of one of the lines, then the slope of the one that's perpendicular is minus 1 over the reciprocal, right? So minus the reciprocal, I should say. So, for example, for the point 3, 4, we found the slope was equal to 3 fourths. So the slope of the normal line is going to be minus 4 thirds. If I have a slope and a point, again, I use y equals mx plus b. Substitute in when y is 4. The slope in this case is minus 4 thirds. x is 3 plus b. 
I get 4 is equal to minus 4 plus b. Man, I believe b is then equal to 8. So my line is y is equal to 4 thirds, minus 4 thirds, x plus 8. Notice a small error in my previous calculation. The actual slope for the tangent line between 3, 4 is minus 3 fourths, which means that the slope of the normal line would be the negative reciprocal of that, which would have been 4 thirds. And if I go back through and make the corrections, then we end up with the equation for the normal line as y equals minus 4 thirds x. The next question asks us to find the points of intersection between the two tangent lines. So we just need to remember that graphs intersect when they are equal. So we'll set the two equations for the tangent lines equal to each other, and that's what we've done right here. So 3 fourths x minus 25 fourths equals minus 3 fourths x plus 25 fourths. We solve, and we get x is equal to 25 thirds or 8 and a third. So if you wanted to find y, you could go back to either of the tangent lines, plug that in for x, and it'll get you y. But what you'll see is that you get the 25 thirds for x, and you'll get 0 for y. Now in step 5, or the question 5, you're asked to plot these. And when you plot them, you'll see that they do actually intersect on the x-axis. And I'll provide you with that plot as well.